Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. So today we're going to be comparing the 2018 midterm elections back to the 2006 midterm elections, the last time there was a substantial Democratic wave year in a midterm election. So we remember 2010 was a Republican wave year along with 2014, which was a Republican wave year in terms of the United States Senate. So going back to 2006 is very fitting for the time that we have now. However, when we look at some of the maps there, the biggest argument that Democrats like to make is that the polling numbers are the same and the House map in terms of possible composition at the end of 2018 looks around the same. The numbers that currently Democrats are projected to win by are also the same numbers that Democrats did win by back in 2006. However, people fail to realize where the Democratic base was really coming from. Democrats wouldn't have had the majority if it wasn't for the South. They don't need to rely on the South anymore. If you look at other parts of the country where Democrats weren't winning before, they are now winning in. So it has compensated in terms of where their voting base is coming from. But we are seeing some very uh, substantial similarities in a number of these races. If we go back to 2010, the Democrats started off with the double-digit lead in opinion polls. In 2006, there was not a single time a Republican led in any of these polls, and same thing in 2018. So it seems like there are similar, uh, I guess, instances where you know that this is going to be a Democratic wave year because things are the exact same compared to Republican wave years, which aren't exactly always the same. So we're starting off with the Democratic versus Republican generic ballot for 2018. On your screen right now, we're currently looking at the generic ballot for the 2018 general election. The Democrats currently have a 7.3% lead according to the RCP average and the most recent poll taken by CNN, which just so happened to be the most recent poll, not recent, but last poll taken in 2006 was also by CNN, if I'm not mistaken, that showed the Democrats ahead by a double digit lead as well, but uh, seven points off from where they were before. And you'll see that in just a moment. So Democrats literally leading in every single one of these Polls. I do not see a time where Republicans did lead at a single point in any of these polls at all. Democrats consistently led in every single one of these polls, and you can see it on the graph here. The only time I'd ever got close was around here when uh, leading at the end of May, sorry, beginning June, and then leading into July. Uh, it was a little bit closer than some people did previously expect. So now we're looking at 2006. The final results were Democrats plus 7.9. And in fact, I was mistaken. It was a Fox News poll. But right before it was taken, a CNN poll that shows the Democrats ahead by 20%. So looking at these final results, it's around the same numbers we're seeing now. So if the Democrats do underperform by the margin they do here, it could be around to a 3 to 4% lead for Democrats nationwide. But we're not really seeing that much inaccuracy in polling compared to where we saw it before. Right now, if we look at the data itself, it could be... Uh, pretty trustable considering that much of this data has been confirmed by multiple polling uh, companies not just one poll that many people trust just every single one hints at that and also these double digit leads that show democrats plus 15 plus 6 uh, plus 20 plus 13 obviously weren't the most accurate, but they still hinted at a Democratic victory. Looking at the rest of these polls again, not a single time Republicans led, not once did the Republicans lead and the generic ballot here, and you saw it around here. So the Democrats were leading by double digits throughout the entire campaign season. That is not something we saw here, um, but the Republicans did end up narrowing up the race in the last couple of days, which is exactly what we're seeing here uh, in the last couple of weeks, but uh, we could see it starting earlier off as we're looking at 2006 uh, versus 2018. But right now, just looking at the pure bol polling data, very, very similar. Let's move over to the Senate map. We currently have 44 Democrats, and this is the exact same Senate map. For whatever reason, uh, this is the exact same Senate map as 2006. So 44 Democrats, 49 Republicans. Uh, no really understanding of who would take the majority here as of these toss-up races, with seven of them in total. Keep in mind, a number of these races are contested. If we actually look at the map from 2006, this is not 2018, but there are very, I mean, there's a lot of similarities here. Just excluding states like Indiana and, let's see, Nebraska, which can swap between red to blue, sorry, actually blue to red, um, all the way up in, uh, let's see, no, so this one's blue to red, sorry, um, but... If you go up to the state of Maine, that one is also a Democratic state now. But looking at this map, it looks very similar to what we saw or what we're seeing in 2018. Democratic senator across this area. Uh, Indiana is the only one that's really not, uh, that's red on this map and not and is currently blue. Over here, uh, Nebraska is currently blue in, on this map, but right now it is red. So just not that subtle differences, but overall, the composition was around the same. This was a contested Senate race, okay? If we look at the numbers here, 49 to 49. Now, the reason why the Democrats had the majority uh, was because of Connecticut for Lieberman. Of course, you know who that is. The last name is in the name itself. And the independent from uh, Vermont, which I'm assuming caucus of the Democrats because it was able to give them back the majority. So Democrats went to from 44 from 55 to 44 to 49 to 49 and then two uh other affiliations in the United States Senate, which caucus of the Democrats, which put them at the majority. So right now. 
looking at those numbers, uh, that was very good for the Democratic Party, to be completely honest with you. Looking at these numbers, they went from a point where they are worse off than where they are now, but they're not getting the same voting base. Unfortunately for the Democrats, they no longer have a safe seat in North Dakota or in Nebraska, and they no longer have races that they possibly could win by considerable margins like in Florida. Or if we go over to a state like Missouri or Montana, these states, yes, they were closer, and uh, they were just as close as they are expected to be in 2018. But this election already occurred. The Democrats were able to grab a number of these states. They no longer have the courtesy and the, uh, I guess, buffer of Nebraska or North Dakota, but they do gain back Maine. But also Florida could go just as easily as Missouri could go, or North Dakota could go or Montana could go. A number of these states could possibly go, but at this point in time, many of them were safe. I mean, again, for example, North Dakota, 30% margin for the uh, Democratic candidate there. I mean, he won every single county. We would not see that now. In 2012, all of a sudden, Heidi Heitkamp swooped in and won, held it for the Democratic Party narrowly. Okay, this was an at-large representative. Looking into 2018, another at-large representative, but she's not as popular as she was before, or not, it's just a little bit more known. And Looking at the polling numbers now, Kevin Kramer has led in every single one of these. Yes, there are similarities to what we saw in 2012, uh, where the Republican led here, but Heidi Camp, Heidi Camp is not doing well at all. The last time she led was in February. Keep that in mind. But enough talking about individual Senate races. We can move back to the 2006 Senate elections there. The Democrats had 49 seats, and the Republicans have 49 at the end of the day, at the end of the election. However, looking at the final real clear politics averages, not much we're seeing different than what we see today. Okay, Connecticut, Maryland, Michigan, Minnesota, Missouri— Montana, New Jersey, and Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Rhode Island are all races that we are pretty much going to keep in the Democratic column. Tennessee, more of a toss-up than it was before. Virginia, Democratic state. Washington, Democratic state. Arizona is pretty much the only one that's a little bit different than what we see there. However, the Democrats were relying on a safe state like North Dakota and Nebraska to lead them possibly into the majority. If you're looking at these numbers now, you can see a lot of names that you see currently discussed in modern-day politics. John Kyle, if you remember him, well, he's currently a senator from Arizona. He replaced John McCain after he passed away. Ben Cardin, currently my senator. Debbie Stabenow, still in office. Klobuchar, still in office. McCaskill, still in office. Tester, Menendez, Brown, Casey, Whitehouse, Corker, still in office. Cantwell, still in office. Almost all of these candidates here, except for Jim Webb and Lieberman, are still in office. Maybe not in the same seat because of the Arizona seat here, but these names are still in the Senate, which is very surprising. Now, some of them are retiring. Uh, actually, one of them is retiring, and that is Corker. But other than that, still, they are currently in the Senate. So it means that these people have stayed in past, I mean, 12 years have passed, and they are still in the United States Senate, which doesn't say a lot because that's only really two elections after 2018 ends. But it's just something to note. Uh, when we look at these averages, they weren't too off from the final results. I believe all of these polling numbers were correct in terms of the winner. Some of them were closer than others. Some of them were larger than others. For Pennsylvania, Casey was leading by 11.5%, then he won by 18%. Or McCaskill or Tester led by 3%, Tester won by 1%. So came down to a couple of these races. They were closer or larger than expected, um, but we're seeing very similar numbers in terms of the Senate, but it may be a little bit more lenient in the favor of the uh, GOP. There were 61 contested races here in the United States House of Representatives in which the Democrats did take back. But also, if we go back to 2018, the Democratic Party currently has a possibility of gaining 101 seats. Not really gaining 101 seats, but there are a possibility where there are 101 toss-up seats um, that are not safe. So I took away all the states that seats that are not currently rated as safe, and I've added them up, and it totals to 101. Right now on the toss-up column, there are 32 races in the leaning Democratic column, 18, likely Democratic column, 14 in the leaning GOP column, 24, and 13 in the likely GOP column. So right now when we're looking at these numbers, the Democrats are probably better than they were before. But uh, again, looking at these numbers, it's going to be very hard to show how the Republicans could hold on to the majority they have now, but it's still possible for them to take it. But if we're looking at the results from 2006 and we see any similarities to 2018, which we are, it could spell out bad news for the GOP if history tends to repeat itself. So that covers the House, the Senate elections, and now we can move over into the governor elections. The governor scorecard is the Democrats plus 6%. Now, there were Democratic wins in states like Maryland and Massachusetts, which we're not expecting now. Looking at the Senate map we have now, it's a lot better for the GOP. 23 Republicans already, straight off the bat. Okay, we're seeing GOP uh, leads in Alaska, in my home state of Maryland, in New Hampshire, in states like Vermont and Massachusetts, which is pretty surprising considering how Repu Democratic of the states they are, and they currently have Republican incumbents. Arizona, not so, sorry, Arkansas, oh my gosh, geez. Alaska, not so much. But looking at the rest of these toss-up races, the Republicans currently have 23. 
per majority in the NGA, they need 26. So they only need three. Democrats need six. So actually, no, they need six to tie. They need seven to take back the majority in the NGA. So looking at these toss-up races, they currently need seven out of these eight toss-up races. So it's going to be very hard for them to do that. Now, looking back at 2006, the Democrats definitely had a much better standing in terms of where they were before. In terms of the governor averages, they are pretty much showing the exact same thing we're seeing now. But they had a Repu they had an incumbent in Arizona. They had a Democrat winning in Arkansas. Okay, yes, California had a Democratic uh, governor lose there before because of the recall election. Then Schwarzenegger came in and led by 14.7%. Colorado had a GOP, uh, sorry, a Democratic governor, um, I believe governor. Uh, actually, yeah, so it was a pickup, sorry, not an incumbent, but still won nonetheless. Connecticut had a GOP hold. Florida had a GOP hold. Georgia, Hawaii, Idaho, some of these more surprising than others. Uh, Illinois, Iowa, Kansas, Maine, Democratic holds. Maryland, Massachusetts pickups for the Democrats. Now, I don't want to go through all of these, but still, we're seeing a little bit of similarities in terms of the governor races, but this map is a lot better for the Republican Party, considering that they possibly could win in Ohio, Georgia, Florida, Iowa, Wisconsin, Kansas, Nevada, and at this point, Oregon, for whatever reason. So looking at the rest of these races, I'm pretty sure they're all going to go how they're currently called, but these pure toss-up races are going to get very close, very fast. So that compares 2006 versus 2018 based on numbers alone and data alone, uh, and that pretty much wraps up today's video. So thank you guys for watching this video. Comment down suggestions below, and I'll see you all tomorrow.